Yo, what's going on everybody? Thank you all for tuning in. My name is Cody Vondell, and today we're gonna take a little break from fonts and logos to add motion to some Photoshop compositions. The students in my motion design class are working on this exact project right now, so I figured why not go ahead and make a little video out of it. Adding some subtle motion to your illustrations and compositions really takes your viewer to the next level, and I think the techniques that we're gonna cover today are really going to impress your audience. Before we get started, I just wanna say thank you all so much for liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting on the videos. It means a lot that the work that I'm doing here helps you out with your design process. And if you're working along with me on screen or using some of the templates that I sell on Etsy, make sure to hop on our Discord. We have a growing community of artists, producers, creatives over there sharing their resources, their works in progress, music, memes, all kinds of cool stuff. It is a great place to show up and network with other artists. Let's take a moment really quick to check out what everybody's been working on. As always, everybody on the server is crushing it, doing amazing work. It's so cool to hop on there and see. And if you're not already over there, I hope to see you there soon. If you wanna support my channel and get yourself some really cool merchandise and design templates, make sure to hop on my Etsy. I have pins, I have patches, I have t-shirts and hats, a variety of holographic stickers and of course, graphic design templates that will make your workflow a breeze. And if you like my intro, outro, background music, I create it all, just search Cody Vondell on Spotify or your favorite streaming service. And I'm also available on SoundCloud and Bandcamp. And of course, at Cody Vondell on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and all that. With all of it being said, let's hop on screen and add some motion to these compositions. All right, so here's the Photoshop document that we're gonna be importing into After Effects and adding motion to. Um, as you can see, not too many layers. Uh, we got our character, our island, our sky, a uh, little tree to add some uh, depth of field. And uh, here we are, just gonna go ahead and create a brand new composition, 1920 by 1080. Uh, duration, five or six seconds, totally work. So I've actually already imported this Photoshop document. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and double click on it, open it up on my timeline. And uh, as you can see, all the layers are here. We'll probably go ahead and start working from the back, maybe the island or the sky, and then work our way forward from there. So I think the first thing that we can do, let's go ahead and start with the island. Um, let's go ahead and drop a keyframe on the position and scale all the way at the end, because we know that's where we want it to end at. And then back here at the very beginning, we're just gonna kind of change positions and scale and it'll automatically drop a keyframe in there for us because it knows that we already have another keyframe at the end of the video. So it recognizes that uh, different times on the timeline, it wants to do different things. We're gonna add a little Gaussian blur here to the island. We can uh, double click on Gaussian blur when island selected or we can drag that effect over onto the layer. Either way works. Um, so I've gone ahead and put a keyframe there because um, at one second in, I want it to you know be fully how I designed it, um, but here at the very beginning, let's go ahead and you know turn that blurriness up so that in that first second, we just get some serious blur. And we've actually gone ahead and copied it and pasted it on the sky as well. So there's sort of a, uh, you get to see everything kind of come into focus. And for the sky, let's go ahead and just uh, drag it from one side to the other. Um, using keyframes like that, it's automatically going to recognize that we started on one side and when we drag it to the to the other side uh, at a different time, it's going to automatically keyframe it for us. So that's what we are working with as of right now. It's looking pretty cool. So let's go ahead and start playing with our character. So I know that the position and scale, uh, I want that all the way at the end, I want them to be about this, that size and I'd say something around right there ought to work. That's looking pretty cool. Yeah, that's definitely it. Cool, cool. All right, so 
Let's go ahead and drag in a lens flare because the lens flares in the Photoshop document, they look cool uh, in still, like as a still, but not really cutting it as far as uh, motion goes. So we have a lens flare in here now, um, just a little stock asset, and we're just kind of placing it the right way and uh, kind of keyframing some stuff. I've also gone ahead and keyframe that big tree to just kind of move in and get a little bit larger, just like the uh, character does. So it just adds that, that extra element of, uh, you know, just really makes you feel like you're in this world with the character. And let's go ahead and put some rainfall. Um, I've added a totally empty layer, just a blank PNG file. And by double clicking on any of these simulations, we can uh, use that blank file to uh, add rain or snow or something like that. In this case, I think rain will look really cool. Um, sort of a rainy, sunny day. I love, love that kind of weather, so I think that looks cool. Um, and now we're just gonna kind of uh, play with the different variables on the rainfall, um, the speed, the wind, opacity, all that kind of stuff until we feel like it's looking right. Um, we don't want it to be too heavy. We don't want it to be too thin. So something like that ought to be pretty cool. That lens flare is really working out for us too. This whole thing's really come together in a cool way. Yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, start playing with like color correction and how we want all that to look. All right, so I have this gradient that I'm gonna use for my background and we've just created a brand new composition and we're just gonna drag that pre-comp over here um, and make a copy of it. And we're just gonna play around with different um, blend modes. I think this blend mode is gonna be on lighten and this one will probably be on like, uh, you know, like hard light, something like that. That's looking close to how I want, but it's a little too blown out. So uh, maybe one thing that we could try Actually, let's uh, change the length of this composition really quick, make sure that it had an extra second at the end. Cool, that's looking better. Yeah, so let's go ahead and just add a quick little auto color correction. Um, I think that that will uh, kind of fix the blown out look that we have going on right now. Yeah, that's it. I want it to be really bright and uh, I want it to be blown out to a degree, but that was just a little bit too much. So um, I think this is really leaning towards how I wanted it to look. And one other thing that we could do just to kind of Heighten the, the overall look is just kind of add a noise to this uh, composition to just kind of give it a more textured feel. Just double click noise. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's looking about right. That is, that's exactly what I wanted it to look like. So with a few layers, effects, keyframes, we can take our illustration, our composition to that next level and really impress our audience. And it doesn't take very long at all. Before you go, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I have a ton of fun content on the way. And if you wanna check out some of the recent work that I've done, I just released the best fonts for Y2K Aesthetic Part 9. The Y2K Mascot Maker, how to create characters and how to color them. and recreating this famous vaporwave graphic that I made uh, nearly a decade ago. Oh, before you go, here's a brand new song I've been working on. I was inspired by The Prodigy. I started getting this cool melody in my head. So I put together this little beat. I figure we'll end the video on that note. So that wraps us up for today. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I'm looking forward to talking to you on my Discord server and I will see you in my next video. Thank you all.